Good morning, USA. Welcome to another episode of the Bernie or Bus Show. Fueled by coffee, cranberry trail mix, organic, roasted, unsalted, mixed nuts, and a passion, ardent and unwavering, for Senator Bernie Sanders. I'll drink to that. I immediately got into an argument with one of my snarling Democrat friends on Facebook this morning. And then I had an interesting discussion with Victor Tiffany, the co-founder of Bernie or Bust. And it was interesting how uh, similar those conversations were. One was coming from the position of adversary and the other was coming from the position of ally, but it still was almost the same conversation. Here is the Facebook conversation. I posted, no, my, my friend Evan posted this article called Support for Medicare for All Dips. Most people like their employer plans. And if you watch the debates and Bernie's calling out Jake Tapper and, and how they put Medicare ads on both sides of his statement that they were going to put ads directly against Medicare for all, I didn't even bother unpacking this whole article and, and trying to rebut it. What I said is that we know who is behind this research. And then, of course, that was called a poor defense. And then he told me to keep being in denial. And then I told him about the commercials from the healthcare industry during the debates. And he's talking about polls and how people supposedly are, are um, what I said, they're, they're buying into the propaganda. The polls show that they're believing the propaganda about health care. But who's paying for that propaganda? CNN charged $300,000 to air commercials during the Democratic debate. And those commercials were designed, <laughs> and they put regular looking humans in these commercials instead of evil monsters, which in my opinion they are, because they're trying to slant public opinion to believe that we don't need single payer health coverage. And as you hardcore burners know, single payer health care is the very core of economic freedom, which is where I'm going to go next. I think everything boils down to economic freedom and, and anything our friends and adversaries tell us to the contrary is a distraction. Now, some people are trying to distract us and other people are just being distracted and then pulling us down with them. But either way, friend or foe, we have to stop being distracted and keep our eye on the prize. And the eye on the, the, the prize is freedom. Economic freedom is simply the gateway to every other kind of freedom. And so we could get bogged down talking about racial bigotry, talking about abortion, talking about Oh, all the, the myriad issues that, that people want to engage us, whether they agree with us or disagree with us, we waste so much time talking about things that, that distract us from the central issue, which is economic freedom. And so in my conversation with Evan, we got down to it. I've said again and again that the reason mainline Democrats don't want Bernie Sanders is because they're elitists. And so Evan kept trying to distract me with, with poll data, and I kept saying, look, I know why you're saying what you're saying. I know why you're saying what you're saying. You're trying to protect your privilege. Liberals have been just as bigoted and um, tribalistic over the years as conservatives and liberals and neoliberals are protecting the status quo. So no matter what reasoned and reasonable arguments they put out there, they're, they're stealthily protecting their status quo. They'll say the right things about social issues, but when it comes right down to it, they're defending their privilege. And that's what Evan's doing.
So he throws out all these reasonable arguments. Go on my Facebook group and, and, and read the whole thing. I said, Trump is a distraction. Predatory capitalism and its cronies are the problem. And I called him a crony of predatory capitalism. And that's what mainline Democrats, whether they realize it or not, are. The Democrats are controlled opposition. Vladimir Lenin once stated, the best way, well, Lenin, there he goes. Facebook tries to help me too much sometimes. And then on my slow old computer, I'm going to skip Leonin and I'm going to go right to the article I wrote in rebuttal to Evan because I noticed my, my Bernie or Bus Show episodes get longer and longer as I get more and more ardent about what I'm trying to say. What does freedom look like? Conservatives lately have taken to repeating the slogan type argument that voting against Bernie Sanders is voting for freedom. Evan is a Democrat, but but some of my conservative friends, many of whom are truck drivers, loggers, mill workers and such, because that's where I grew up in that, in that side of, of life. Conservatives and, and liberals are being duped by the same big money interests. So what I've noticed is that people are saying Bernie is a vote for Bernie is a vote against freedom. And there are these slogans that come up and these buzzwords that come up that we're better off to just ignore. I don't even want to utter them aloud because what's going on underneath is coming from big money. Conservatives are beginning to understand what the leverage of Bernie or Bust can achieve. Conservative, conservatives are watching this from the sidelines and they're, they're noticing that their, their liberal adversaries are starting to get moved in disturbing ways, at least disturbing to the to the liberals, by Bernie or Bust movement. John Cowan is a great example of people coming unglued because of the pressure that populism is putting on them to go beyond lip service and actually respond to the needs and desires of we the people, which many conservatives may see as a good thing. But they also are beginning to understand that what Sanders is proposing can change the status quo that has remained essentially unchallenged since JFK was assassinated in ways that they have been taught to mistrust. To get right to the root of the problem, we need to look at the market and how it works. We have never had a free market. Conservatives and liberals, if they have their head on straight, will agree with that statement. We have never had a free market. We always have had a rigged market where the rule makers make rules to favor big money interests over the interests of the little guy. There is no more fundamental freedom for regular Americans than economic freedom. Collectively, we are a combination, values-wise, of republic, that's where a Republican comes from, democracy, that's where the Democrats come from, and meritocracy is on both sides of the aisle. A meritocracy is a place where people who are talented and hardworking and industrious can get ahead in life. And that is a collective value of pretty much all Americans. They believe, Americans traditionally believe that the playing field should be level and that merit should allow those who possess it to rise. Bernie Sanders has no problem with these values, despite the way that his enemies are trying to rebrand him. Bernie is attempting to create a system that can work for everyone while still allowing people with talent and industry to get ahead in life. To keep conservatives from seeing this truth, is of paramount importance to the political and media elites on the right who actually are neoliberals in disguise. They're actually all working for the same big money interests. Regular hardworking Americans who believe in capitalism, real capitalism, not predatory rigged capitalism, and who have not been duped by the elitist pundits on both sides of the political aisle, have nothing to fear from Bernie Sanders. That's why the elitist politicians and the elitist media have been working so hard to hide the truth from working class people. Make no mistake, Bernie is a constitutionalist. Let that sink in. If you're a rugged individualist, conservative, Bernie is also 
He is a constitutionalist. All these brandings and, and mudslinging labels are trying to hide the fact that Bernie is a constitutionalist. That's why many on the right are beginning to notice some overlap in the way they think about freedom and the way Bernie thinks about freedom. That causes the pundits on the right to lose their shit. Hence the sloganeering. And it gets thicker and thicker. And if Bernie gets traction and, and looks like he may get the, the nod from the, from the Democratic National Committee, those on the right are going to start to come after this idea, and the sloganeering is going to get worse. In his book, Rigged, How Globalization and the Rules of the Modern Economy Were Structured to Make the Rich Richer, <laughs> that's, that pretty much says the whole thing. Dean Baker shows how the wealthy masters of society have created rules for a game that benefits them. We live in an interventionist economy, an economy where the government has intervened in a variety of ways that have had the effect of shifting income upward. If this intervention in turn lowers consumption and therefore output and employment, a policy of not intervening is in fact a choice to let the earlier interventions go unchallenged. The beneficiaries of the upward redistribution may like the outcome, but it is not because they prefer leaving matters to the market. Rather, they prefer government interventions that have the effect of giving them more money. And that's how it's rigged. Conservatives and, and um, not conservatives, leftists, ought to be able to see that that's true, whatever, whatever they grew up believing. All right, so the meanings of all these slogans and, and catchwords are slippery and treacherous. And instead of getting sucked into them and into their semantic traps, hold firm to what economic freedom would look like in your own mind. Don't let me tell you what it would look like. Just look in your own mind, whatever value system you're coming from, and think about it. Think about what economic freedom should look like, and then compare that to what Bernie is describing, to his vision. Compare your vision to Bernie's vision. And don't let any slogans get in the way. Just look at it squarely. And unless and until that happens on a massive scale, the game will continue to be rigged against regular hardworking Americans.